All right, so welcome back to I'm Ty Smith, Modern Renaissance Man. You are looking watching MRM Ministries. If it's your first time visit, let me say thank you and welcome. But do not subscribe to this channel yet until you get an idea of who I am. Look at my other videos on church slash God topics in the playlist. All right, to get an idea of what I'm talking, what I'm about. All right, this is gonna be an idea of what I'm about too. But I'm just saying, you can get a, get yourself a little ingrained in it if you do it that way. All right, so I'm back on this thing with this cuss word thing. So what I'm saying this all for is that this: if you are taught that something is wrong then you look for wrong. It's just like in a lot of self-righteous churches that I've been around. You look for everything bad in the person. They tell you, you no, know, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. We shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that. We ain't going to do this. We ain't. And then guess what? When I went amongst my school fellow brothers and sisters in my school on my track team, basketball team, all I did was look at everything that church has taught me was wrong. Man, look at him up there looking like this. Look at her wearing this. Look at her wearing that. Look at her painting her. Look at her hair. Look at her this. Look at him doing this. I can't wear it. Look at him. Look at his pants. Look at his this. Look at that. He's showing that. She's showing too much leg. Her skirt is three inches too high above her legs. I mean, it just got to the point to where all I was doing was being self-righteous because I'm pointing out all the wrong in people. And all that did was just drive me completely mad. And it made you feel like you might have had a one-up because you don't do those things, which it don't because God cares about this. In other words, when I say heart, I'm talking about your inner being, uh, who you are, what makes you you. That's what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm getting at. When you say a cuss word and you want to use a cuss word, the fact that in society we know the cuss words are used to really emphasize something really, really, really strong. And in the context that you're using those cuss words is let me know a lot about your heart. Like I said, I've known people on a basketball team, whatever like that. Something happened, they, they dropped the bomb, you know, or they, they dropped the F-bomb. But the F-bomb is emphasizing what's going on in their heart. So let me slow down a little bit. If a person, like for instance, basketball, let's y'all think of any sport or any incident. I don't care if it's fishing. Think of anything that would make a person say, truck. Now, do you really look at them like, oh my God, he just cussed. You know what I mean? That's the first thing people do. Whether somebody do it in that context or somebody do it intentionally saying, man, you know what? Shut the F up. Or man, I just lost this. F and you know they drop it and you <gasps> they say a cuss word I would be more concerned with the intention of the person's heart of why the word was used versus the fact that they said the word so let's go back to the thing I told you let's think about somebody fishing playing basketball whatever the issue may be whatever the case may be if they fishing oh I lost a fish F or D or mother effer oh he said a cuss no see when he did that his heart is saying Darn, I just lost it. Or his heart is saying, oh, I just lost possibly a prize. Or in basketball, you missed a layup. Oh, I can't believe I missed that layup. I missed it big time. The heart is saying, oh, I made a huge mistake. But the heart is not corrupt because it used the word that we inside has deemed as being bad. Now, if I say something to you in the context of, you know, somebody saying something, somebody getting an argument, and they say, shut up, you stupid mother effing B. Now, again, just said those words. Like some, I'm going to get in trouble for just even saying the mother effing and all that. I'm going to get in trouble for that. But anyway, that's for people that's, that's religious minded people. If you are very religious when it comes to things like this, this definitely going to probably be stepping on a lot of you guys' toes. Because I tell people a lot of times, I once was religious, but I am no longer. And thank God I'm not. I'm totally free of a lot of religious stuff because religion does not trump relationship. Get relationship and God will revelate these things to you. I promise you he will. So anyway, um, like I said, if you're in a conversation and you say, oh, my God, you know, somebody, you, you, you and another person argue, you saying, F you, stupid mother, F and B. See, again, even though those cuss words were dropped, the question is going to come into this is, what was that heart intent? That heart intent was to try to spill out so, such a strong word to show you how much I'm hating you or how much I want to just uh, drive something bad to you that I got to use the strongest words known to man or that we made up that's supposed to be the strongest words to use when somebody want to really emphasize something. Then that's when I can look at it like, oh man, this person is really spewing out hate. Because when they sat there and said that, you mother F and B kiss my A, I can't believe you, you S head, you know, you can go suck a this or eat a this, da 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 da. What that person pretty much is conveying is from their heart, I am literally so mad at you right now, I am hating you. I'm so mad at you right now, I can kill you. I'm so mad at you right now, I want to physically harm you. So pretty much what I'm getting at is this. That's why it said, the Bible said things like, man looking on the outward appearance, but God looking at the heart. Now, that's what I'm trying my best to do when, I, when I, I'm doing it really well now. I'm not to be bragging, but I just learned that because he revelated that to me, that I look at the fact that what is this person's heart trying to push? What is going on in that person's heart that they want to use those strong words? And whatever it is, 
now we can get to the matter of that. So what I'm saying is for church folk is this. Don't be so keen to somebody drop a cuss word and you want to, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I can't believe it. They just, people are going to be people. I mean, I, the family, a lot of family that I grew up around, man, it's cussing going all day long. I don't even notice it. I don't even care. Because again, if I'm sitting here saying to you guys, if I sat here and I dropped my phone, I would, shoot. Y'all know I'm meaning like, oh my God, I dropped my phone. Now, what's the difference between shoot and then replace it with the I? What's the difference? Whether I said the OO version or the I version, the heart content is the same. The heart's content is still the same. I'm upset because I dropped my phone. You know, now, I say this all the time, and I'm not ashamed of it. I say things like, man, what the heck was going on there? And what's the difference between that and hell? Or I say something like, oh my God, you got to be freaking kidding me. What's the difference between that and the word with the, with the you in it? It's the heart's content. That's what it all comes down to. So what I'm saying therefore is this. You can have a more enjoyable life if you did not have your antenna set up to sit there and want to judge and really just mm, somebody because they're using cuss words. You know what? Matter of fact, when you actually do y'all, do you want to know the real way you can curse somebody? You know what? All that cussing and stuff they're doing, they on their way to hell. You actually are putting a curse on somebody right there when you're doing that. You are damning them to hell because they're doing something that God don't even look at. Don't even look. I mean, come on, God's words. Words is what we're talking about. A word, not the heart content in which the word is used, but the word itself. Yes, I know y'all probably like, well, I don't agree with you. I'm so, I don't care what you say. I just never like the word. You think about this real, I mean, okay, you think about this. You were taught to not like those words, plain and simple. You were taught to not like those words. We were taught when we were growing up, my mom them taught us. And I know, I don't know if some, some black folks, if y'all out there listening, or even some folks I talk with in the South, white people in the South, a lot of us had the same type of upbringings in the South. South Southern folks and a lot of black folks kind of got a lot of some of the similarity type things going on when it comes to raising and different things. Like, you know, we were taught that we couldn't, we, me, my mom, I mean, I'm just telling you the truth. We were taught that we couldn't cuss until we was grown or something like that. I mean, we couldn't drink dark pop until we was teenagers. Matter of fact, in my family, saying lying was a cuss word. No kids should be saying the word lying. No kids should be telling the adult that they're lying. What? We were taught that that's a bad word. You couldn't say lying? Man, you couldn't. And then like, I don't know, I know. Mama, I know. I'm just telling, I'm just telling the truth. Because it's all going in the same thing. I remember uh, when we were little, Mama told us she didn't cuss on Sundays. <laughs> because that's the Lord's Day. So I was like, huh? So any other day is okay, but you just don't cuss on Sunday. You know, and then she didn't play no secular music on Sunday. She played only church music on Sunday till afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, I'm saying all that is that we have to think about where do these traditions, what I call religiosity things, make their way into church to where now we want to put those things down. That's what makes you a Christian. That's what makes you righteous is the fact that you don't say a cuss word. But then yet your thoughts can be just as corrupt as all get up and God knows those. So what good is it? So again, folks. If y'all want me to kind of go into this a little bit more, I can, but I'm just saying I'm trying to pretty much give y'all just a straightforward thing at it. That yes, me, I watch movies that got cussing in it. I've listened to songs that have cussing in it. It does not bother me because the whole point of it is I'm looking at it for the contents of the person's heart and what they was using that cuss word for. You know, so okay, it's ho a cuss word. Because according to church world, ho is a cuss word. But then, oh, but the church version of it is whore. I'm just saying, we have to really evaluate and look in ourselves. Let your emotions calm down right now because a lot of people, all of you guys have already risen up already. Brother, no, you are wrong on that because the Bible says in the same outcome, blessings and curses. Curses. I'd even say the same thing about blessing. I do say God bless you all, right? So whatever, when I say God bless you, I'm simply saying I want him to bless you because he can give our blessings. Now, now we say a curse word or anything like that from the same mouth flow of blessings, same mouth flow of curses so when you bless somebody what are you doing when i say god bless you all i'm telling i want him to bless you now if i say i bless you all then you guys gonna be like well what are you blessing us with and i'm like well um uh uh you know what i do know what i bless you guys with, because i said i hope and pray to every last one of you guys have food shelter and clothing 
I'm saying those words. That's that's the blessing I want y'all to have. I want y'all to have food, shelter, and clothing, and great health. Those are blessings. Now, if I turn around and said, I hope y'all all die. I hope y'all get in great with, 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 I don't know, tuberculosis. And I hope you all have bronchitis and get mosquito bites and develop malaria and West Nile and H1N1. That's putting curses on you. Now, the fact that I said, I hope and pray every last one of you guys have food, shelter, and clothing and great health. That's me with my words. That's my blessing. But I don't just say, bless you. You know, I know I'm going to get on. That's for another subject saying, bless you when somebody sneezes. But anyway, so I want y'all to really follow me on this while I'm saying all this. Is that really think about what we say and we say it. When I bless somebody in word or in deed, in deed, me. Oh, well, you need that power bill paid for it? Okay, I got it. I'll take care of it. Oh, like we had a patron. Well, we had somebody on here that needed help down in Florida. Okay, we got y'all. Patrons, we sent money there. Had somebody in here that needed help with light bill. Subs and everybody, y'all stepped up. Bless them. Somebody in here needed bunk beds and all that. Took the money from patron, which I got to do a video on that too. Took the money from patron, bought them bunk beds and bought them a steel bunk bed and then bought them also the uh, mattress to go with it. Bless them. Now, Every video that I end, I, I bless you guys, right? With words. But then also what I do for others, those are the deeds. That's how you bless. See, when I say that I'm blessed and you guys say to me, you are blessing, something that's blessed can only be a blessing. Something that's cursed will only be a curse. So if something is cursed and it's in your life and you notice that your life just seems to be spiraling out of control, that's because you have a curse with you might be him or it might be her whatever it is. <laughs> might be i'm just i'm just throwing something out there i'm just letting y'all know it can be a brother a sister a dog i don't know it can be no i'm just joking no not about the brother sister brother sister mother auntie something if something is causing your life to spiral out of control that's a curse it's not necessarily the word so again this whole thing is about the words folks it's not about the fact that you are saying what we call cuss words it's the fact that it's the hard intentions that's what it is. It's all about those words. You don't believe me? You can say things that can actually make a person feel way worse than if you call it a cuss word. Okay, say for instance, you and your wife get into it and you say, you know what? I cannot stand you. I hate you. Ooh, ooh. Now, is hate a cuss word? But hate is a curse. The actual demeanor of hate, the, the, the state of being of hate is a curse. That's why it's wrong. So, okay, oh, what about if you sat there and told your wife, you know what, you just a, I get, you're going to murder, you just a fat cow. Now, see, is she mad because you called her a fat cow, or is she mad because she felt your heart's intent? Now, same thing, what if your wife said to you, I can't stand you, you big fat water buffalo. Now, are you mad because your wife called you a fat water, water buffalo? No, because you know that you're not a water buffalo, but are you, or is it that you're mad because you know that your wife said something that you knew that her heart intent was to hurt you? That's what I'm getting at, folks. We really have this one I talk about when I say things like superior minded thinking is that God has to revelate those things to us to help us to understand what these things are. Otherwise, you're going to be living a life of just constantly judging, constantly judging. You won't even be able to hear a good message, watch a good movie, hear a good song because you got thrown off by the cuss word. Yes, you got thrown off by the cuss word, and it is absolutely taught. It is not biblical. You won't find it in the Bible where it says nothing about saying a cuss word is sinning. You won't find it in there. No, I've asked him. He gave me the answer to it. I looked for it. You're not going to find it in there. And again, you have to understand where I'm coming from on this. I'm talking about the way that he see it, not the way that society has taught us. Again, did y'all not? Did you, I, don't, I don't have to go over this again, but I'm just saying I really want to push it that I can say I hope and pray every last one of you guys have food, shelter, clothing, and great health. That's blessing. I hope and pray that all of y'all develop a disease and you get sick. I hope and pray that every last one of you guys just die a terrible death. Just your last 10 minutes of your life is just in the most agonizing pain. That's putting a curse on you. That's what I'm trying to really get us to understand here, folks. If y'all have any other questions relating to this subject right here, leave them in the comments below because I'm pretty sure stuff is going to be flying out the closet on this one right here. I know. Then again, I don't know, but I'm prepared for it because the thing is, is we're in a point to where a lot of people with God is waking up. People are sick and tired of religion. They're tired of religious things that people think is keeping them on a good side with God because you're doing religious things that he don't even care about versus having a relationship with him.
All right, hit me with the questions if y'all want to regarding this subject, all right? Let me know. Leave in the comments below. I am Ty Smith, Modern Renaissance Man, and you are watching MRM Ministry Channel. I hope and pray every last one of you guys have food, shelter, and clothing, and most of all, hope and pray every last one of you guys are in great health. God bless you all through Jesus. Thank you.